All right, thanks for joining today. Today we're going to be talking about the Gravity Legal QuickBooks integration. Gravity Legal QuickBooks integration was designed to reduce the administrative work associated with accepting and posting payments. So it really does two things. First of all, it allows law firms to record all payments made in Gravity Legal to QuickBooks, to the QuickBooks chart of accounts. And second, it allows law firms to send out invoices from QuickBooks with a Gravity Legal payment link attached to it and have payments made on that link automatically apply to the, that particular QuickBooks invoice. So there are a lot of settings involved when you're <clears throat> a lot of options that you can choose when setting up the integration. So we'll go through that today. Uh, this tutorial assumes that you already have the integration set up. You can see our support center um, or reach out to us directly if <clears throat> you need help getting the integration actually initiated. So I'm gonna start in Gravity Legal and I'm gonna to go to my integration settings here. <clears throat> and the first thing we'll talk about is this account mapping section. So what this does is it basically, if you accept a payment in Gravity Legal that is not associated, that is not associated with either a QuickBooks invoice or one of our third party integrations such as Lean Law or Matter 365, then those payments that are not associated with those two things will be recorded in these places in QuickBooks. So I have account mapping here turned on, and which means if I accept a trust payment into my Washington IOLTA account, it's going to show up as a deposit, a QuickBooks deposit, and it's going to show up in my QuickBooks, uh, the, my trust account that I have set up as a bank type bank account in QuickBooks. And then also <clears throat> I have a liability account set up for trust payments. So note that if you have sub accounts under your trust account for trust liability account for each client or each matter, <clears throat> you will have to take this, take all these payments from the top level, this trust payments, uh, the top level trust payments account and pull them down into that particular client account. If you don't want to do that, I would highly recommend looking into uh, Lean Law or Matter 365 and our integration there. They basically automate this the, the process of placing those payments into the proper account. Um, <clears throat> but if you're just using Gravity directly with with QuickBooks, then you can put them into the top level trust payment liability account. So again, these come in as deposits, <clears throat> and then for all operating payments they come in as payments, QuickBooks type of payments. And you can select, in this case, we have a asset account um, or income account, excuse me, that um, I've, I've created here called Gravity Legal Payments. So again, this means that if you accept payments that are not associated with a QuickBooks invoice and not associated with a third party integration, then it's gonna default to this account map in here. Now, one other thing I'll mention is that <clears throat> you can just record the payments in QuickBooks or the deposits, but you can also create a corresponding invoice for operating payments. So if you don't want just the payment to come in, you want an actual invoice, corresponding invoice to be created when that payment happens, then you can do that as well. So <clears throat> the last setting I'll mention for account mapping is uh, surcharging. So if you're charging the fees to the clients um, and you're already doing that, you know that you get the gross amount deposited into your bank account. So transaction plus the fee. And then we take that fee out at the end of the month. So this allows you to book those fees into a liability account. So you know that, okay, these are fees that I've accepted to reimburse me for the credit card processing fees that are taken out at the end of the month. So one thing I forgot to mention too, is that if you do create a invoice for every operating payment, you can also select what line item that, that, um, that online payment line item, which we'll look at, um, <clears throat> that's created with that invoice, which account that's deposited into. And I would recommend that these two be the same. They don't have to, but if you have this setting turned on, then this is going to take precedence, uh, take precedence here. Okay, so let's do an example. 
So <clears throat> let's say create a new payment. We'll put a thousand dollars and we'll put this into the operating account. And it's important to note <clears throat> that only clients that are pulled in from QuickBooks will be recorded in QuickBooks, will be subject to that account mapping that we just discussed. So if you created a client directly in Gravity Legal, it has, you have nowhere to put it in QuickBooks. So it needs, all payments need to be associated with a QuickBooks client if you want that payment to automatically show up in QuickBooks. So we'll create that payment link and then we'll go ahead and make a payment. Card details and I'll enter a credit card so we can see what happens with the surcharge. All right, and I will complete that payment. So now <clears throat> what we're going to see is a few things. First of all, we'll see that, again, coming back to the integration settings, we're going to see that there's an invoice that's going to be created for that payment. We have that invoice turned on and it's going to have one line line item that's called online payment and it's going to be associated with this gravity legal uh, payments account in quickbooks there so that payment was complete so now if i go to my invoices sales invoices and i look at the most recently created ones a few things have, have happened. So here's our $1,000 invoice that was just created. And if we go look at that, view edit, we'll see that that was an online payment and it shows up as, as paid. And this is invoice 1086 there. The next thing, because we had search charging enabled and because we had the setting enabled to create a new invoice, particularly for that surcharge, it also created a second invoice for us. If we go to view that invoice, you can see that that's the credit card surcharge there. So if I went back to my settings, if I didn't have this in create new invoice for operating payments set up, then I would see a payment under that client um, that was booked into Gravity Legal Payments, but we would not see the corresponding invoice. So if you wanted to go in and create your own corresponding invoice, you could go ahead and do that, assuming this was, was turned off. So that is account mapping. As I mentioned, that's kind of the first part of the Gravity Legal integration. The second part is invoices. So a few settings here. I can turn on so that every time I create an invoice in Gravity Legal, or sorry, an invoice in QuickBooks, then a corresponding payment link will be created in Gravity Legal that's attached to that invoice. So any payments made on that link will apply to that invoice. Um, and then I can choose what bank account, and this is on the Gravity Legal side, so you have your, your deposit accounts. I can choose what bank account is associated with those payment links. So 90% of the time firms put invoice payments into their operating account, but we do encounter some firms who like to put all invoice payments first into the into the trust account and then selectively pull that, that money out. So you can do this by selecting any of your deposit accounts uh, here. <clears throat> I'll get to these in a moment, but down here, I can also print the payment link to the invoice. So if I want that payment link to go on the invoice, I can turn this on as I have here. Now, few options when surcharging uh, on invoice payments. So you can basically do two things. Uh, you can create a new QuickBooks invoice for credit card surcharges. So it would operate very similar to what, similarly to our first example. So if I had a thousand dollar invoice that I created in QuickBooks, it would then create a corresponding payment link in Gravity Legal. And then 
if I paid that or the client paid that on a credit card and there was a $30 charge to the client, then it would create a new invoice just like, uh, just like we did if that setting was on like that. Now, the second option, and you can turn these both off, by the way, but the second option, if you want to record these surcharge payments, is <clears throat> you can add the credit card surcharge automatically as a line item. So we'll do this as the example because it's slightly different than what we saw before. Basically, if you have that same $1,000 invoice, when someone pays, they're going to pay just like they did last time, 1030 However, it's going to then update the invoice with another line item of $30 there. So let's, let's do this example here. So I'm going to create an invoice for Amy's. For thousand dollars, it's not taxable. And then I'm going to save and close. It's very important that you save and close and not save and send because basically the action of closing is what tells gravity legal that you've created a new invoice and it needs a, an associated payment link. So very important to save and close there. So now let's go back to gravity legal and we can see that we just created a thousand dollar operating link for that particular invoice. If I go to view edit and I look at my memo field, I can see that that's invoice 1087 and you can see 1087 is this new one that we just created. That has not yet been paid. Now, if I go to view edit, <clears throat> I can see that that link was dropped in the message on invoice field. So because I had that setting to print invoice or to print link on invoice, that's why this showed up here. And you can customize this message in the settings as well. So let's go back to that 1087 link and we'll actually make a payment on it. And we will also, for example's sake, pay this with a credit card. So we can see the how the surcharge plays out. Okay, so you can see my new amount is 1030. Let me go ahead and complete that payment. If I close this out, you can see that that invoice has been fully paid, but the amount of the invoice has been upped by $30 since we had that setting to add a line item to that invoice as opposed to a new invoice for the surcharge. So you can see here is that credit card surcharge right here. So the, that's the Gravity Legal QuickBooks integration. As I mentioned, there's really two main features. The first is recording payments in Gravity Legal. The second is allowing clients to pay QuickBooks invoice, invoices electronically and have those payments automatically recorded on the QuickBooks or applied to that, uh, to that QuickBook invoice. So if you have any questions at all, uh, please feel free to, uh, to reach out to us. You can get us at gravitylegal.com and slash contact. And that's where you can uh, see our, our phone number, uh, email or contact form. You can also chat us in the application if you have questions. Happy to do a personalized demo for your, your firm. So thanks a lot. Thanks for joining and have a great day.